Hello and welcome to Live from Paris. It's 10pm here in the French capital. I'm Belle Lupton. Now let's remind you of the story we're covering in depth here on France 24. Debris found in the Mediterranean off the Greek coast. It's unclear for now whether it belongs to missing Egypt air flight MS-804. 66 people were on board the Airbus when it went missing in the early hours of Thursday morning. Egypt's vice president says the rescue operation has turned into a search and recovery. Thanks for watching France 24. Let's start by bringing you up to date on that Egypt air crash of flight MS-804. Egyptian aviation officials have confirmed in the last few hours that search teams have found debris in the waters south of the Greek island of Ka Karpathos. The debris includes things like life jackets and bits of plastic floating in the sea, but Greek authorities say it's unclear if this comes from the missing plane. That search in the Mediterranean is being carried out by both Greek and and Egyptian naval forces. And just to remind you, 66 people were on board the Airbus A320 when it lost contact with air traffic controllers just inside Egyptian airspace. Most of the passengers were Egyptian and French. The flight was going from Paris to Cairo. Uh, now, we, let's, for more on that, let's speak to our correspondent, Adam Pletz, who's in Cairo. Uh, and Adam, what's the latest from the Egyptian state media and also from the authorities there? What are they saying? Well, uh, President Sisi has said that the, the search is going to continue. I think this is just affirming that, following the confusion as to whether or not uh, wreckage or parts of the plane have actually been found. And I think a lot of this lies in how, that, uh, how it's been described, the fact that there's uh, objects uh, in the water near a Greek island, uh, including life jackets, various bits of plastic, as you were saying, so sort of debris uh, which could be from the plane. Uh, but then, uh, on top of that, uh, certainly Egypt Air and their Twitter feed described this as wreckage uh, from the plane, saying that that's how the ministry, uh, a ministry here in Egypt, had described it. And so, uh, that seemed to confirm that that you know, parts of the uh, of the actual uh, substantial parts of the actual plane it's had actually been been found. And that's still not clear to to this point. Uh, you know what it is. That they've seen, and of course, now that uh, we're, you know, night has fallen, it's going to be that much more difficult for uh, search teams uh, to to continue uh, in the darkness. Of course, if if what they found was indeed parts of the plane, then they should have narrowed it down to an area where they can continue the, the search with greater confidence uh, and, and sort of focus their resources in, in that area. And in Cairo now, we've got the families of some of the passengers on board who have arrived from France. They've been flown over from Paris to Cairo. Uh, what are they doing now? Where are they being taken? How are they being looked after? Mm. Yeah, what, what we understand is that they'll be met by members uh, uh, from the French consulate, to, uh, including a, a, you know, a team that will include uh, doctors, psychologists, uh, uh, and then uh, they will, uh, uh, much like the members of the of, uh, the Egyptian families uh, of those passengers, uh, they'll be uh, have access to a crisis centre here where they can get first-hand information from the authorities and be the first uh, to be told what's happening. Uh, we don't know yet uh, how many uh, French members, uh, 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 French family members, uh, took up this offer from the Egyptian authorities to travel here to Cairo uh, at their expense and be put up uh, uh, here. Uh, so that they could be as close as possible uh, to the news as it comes out. Uh, but certainly we confirmation that, uh, that some have arrived here uh, in the Egyptian capital. Adam Pletz, thank you very much for that update. Adam Pletz speaking to us from Cairo. Now, the focus is shifting to what happened to that Egypt airplane from the moment it made that unplanned swerve in the air to, to the moment that it presumably hit the water. Here in Paris, where the flight set off from, the president held a news conference earlier in which he emphasised that at this stage, nothing could be ruled out. This information we've been able to gather, the Prime Minister and other members of the government, and of course the Egyptian authorities, confirms to us that the plane came down and is lost. 
It is our duty to find out and understand everything about the causes of what has happened. No hypothesis can be ruled out, nor can any be favored over another. At this stage, we must first put forward our solidarity with the families and continue to search for the cause of this catastrophe. That was the French president, François Hollande. And meanwhile, over in Egypt, the government there has been clear from early on that it does not think the crash could have been caused by a technical error. But uh, if you analyze the situation properly, uh, the possibility of having a different action or going, uh, having a terror attack is higher than the possibility of having a technical uh, So that's why we want to wait for facts, we want to wait for proper investigation, and then make our own statement. You heard there from Egypt's aviation minister and before that, France's president, each with a slightly different interpretation of how the investigation should begin. Now, for more on that, let's bring in Raffaele, Raffaello Pantucci, director of international security studies at RUSI, a UK-based defence and security think tank. And Raffaello, we heard the Egyptian authorities just there much quicker to suggest this could be an act of terrorism than they were after the last crash when a Russian jet came down over the Sinai Peninsula. Now, why might that be? Well, I mean, it's very difficult to know um, at this point. And I think a lot of what we're seeing is essentially speculation based on information that's very partial. But I think clearly people are concerned about the fact that, you know, we haven't heard any stories or reports of distress from the aircraft before something happened to it. And I think this fact of these abrupt movements seems to suggest something um, more akin to maybe foul play than maybe it appeared in other sort of incidents. Um, but at the same time, at this point, it's just very unclear exactly what's happened. Um, and, you know, and in, in this particular case, though, it seems, you know, maybe unlike some of the other incidents that we've seen uh, recently around aviation uh, and planes going down, it seems to be a bit more clear that some sort of sudden event took place. And a sudden event on an aircraft is usually indicator of some either catastrophic failure of the uh, aircraft itself or some sort of attack. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned uh, that we were hearing evidence that was potentially quite partial. How reliable do you think that the Egyptian authorities might be? Well, I mean, I think that, you know, they've got a, an interest in making sure that this is resolved uh, fairly quickly. I mean, clearly, uh, the, you know, they don't want to, the, tour, the tourism industry, for example, in Egypt, has already taken substantial hits because of a number of attacks that we've seen fairly recently in the country. So there, you know, and if you have a situation where you have a certain lack of clarity around an incident, people immediately speculate the worst, and that will mean that, you know, more people will not want to travel to that country. So I guess they're very keen to get some sort of clarity around it quickly, which which is why we're seeing them indicate very quickly that they think or suspect things may have been gone in the, in the, in the direction of foul play. And Raffaello, uh, is it important that 24 hours before going missing, this same plane had made stops in places like Tunisia and Eritrea? I mean, can that be significant? Uh, again, it's very, very difficult to know. I mean, you know, I think that if we are dealing with something where you're looking at a, an incident that has taken place that was terrorism linked, um, the immediate concern has to be about the airport of origin. Um, and, you know, the airport of origin, airports have uh, fairly good and tight security. And when you're talking about, you know, French airports in particular, there are, you know, Western European airports where security is seen as a premium. So if there was a failure in that sort of security, then that's a really big problem which needs to be addressed very quickly. But if the plane has made and stops Raffaello, to place, it's possible it's picked up something there. But who so, knows at this point? Yeah, absolutely. Raffaello, sorry to interrupt you there. I was just going to ask, we're, I mean, we've seen already in, in Paris security being beefed up enormously. Uh, what more can airports do to try and keep themselves secure? 
Well, I mean, you know, it's uh, the difficulty is that we don't know what we're looking at in this situation, so we don't know if it is a failure at the airport or is something else. But I think the, the, the thing about airport security is that it's as much about, um, it's about trying to make sure that you're safe and you're actually making sure it's very difficult for things to get onto the plane, which is as much about passenger confidence as it is about sort of actions to actually prevent stuff. Um, and, you know, clearly, if we're leaning in the direction of an aircraft going down that's emanated from a European airport, a French airport in particular, then immediately people who are traveling to those airports will be concerned about their safety and security. And that has potentially huge ramifications for sort of economies. Raffaello Pantucci, I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there, but thank you very much for that very interesting analysis. Uh, Raffaello Pantucci there from RUSI, the UK-based defense and security think tank. Now, it's been an agonising day for those people with friends and relatives on board that Egypt airplane. Almost 24 hours now since the plane lost contact with air traffic controllers. And they've spent most of that time hoping for answers. Mariam Saab has more from Paris's Charles de Gaulle airport, where many of those people have spent the day. Tears, shock and devastation in Paris. Relatives and friends of the passengers who boarded Egypt Air 804 descend on the airline's counter in Charles de Gaulle Airport, desperate for answers. These are times of panic. They want to know more. And we're looking into what happened, and then we can communicate it to them. Adding to the sense of despair, information is sparse. We learned that a Chadian student was on the plane. He just lost his mother. He was going to Chad to mourn her. He was going to give his condolences to his family. He's a student at saint -Cyr, the military school of saint -Cyr. A crisis centre staffed with psychologists has been set up at a hotel near the airport. The painstaking wait for information is just as tense in Cairo airport. An ambulance transports those overcome with grief for treatment. For some, the trauma is too great to bear. They're very sad and affected. Can you imagine how anyone would feel in this situation? It is the epitome of sadness, and everyone, including us, are in a state of searching for any hope to hold on to. But hope is fast fading. As yet, there are no signs of any survivors. Mariam Saab there reporting on the French families of those passengers on board. And it's not just the French families waiting for more news. The Egyptian relatives of those on board Egypt Air Flight MS-804 have also been gathering, this time at Cairo Airport, in the hope of hearing something. People don't understand. They were unable to explain anything at the press conference. Some people just collapsed and left. My uncle was in Paris where he dropped off his kids a week ago and he was coming to Egypt for a conference. We spoke to him yesterday. We also spoke to his kids. They're at the airport and they'll be going back to Kuwait. My niece was a newlywed who got married six or seven months ago. I'm praying the flight was hijacked or something like that, instead of what we've been told. Those were the voices of some of the Egyptian relatives of the passengers on board that missing Egypt air flight. Now, we're going to move on to some other news now, but don't worry, we'll be... We'll be bringing you more on that Egypt Air plane crash as and when we have it. And don't forget, you can stay up to date with all the latest on the missing plane on our website, www.france24.com, where you can also find analysis and comment on that story. But moving on, and it's day three of strikes here in France, and demonstrations continued throughout the day. By and large, they were peaceful, but there was an outbreak of violence in the capital on Wednesday when masked protesters threw an explosive device into a police car, causing it to burst into flames while two police officers were still inside. Now, they escaped unhurt, but Prime Minister Manuel Valls has vowed harsh punishment for those responsible. Sanam Chantier has more. Taking to the streets for a second time this week, the opponents of a Labour reform bill. Demonstrators turned out in droves across Marseille, Rennes and the French capital on Thursday. While protests and numbers have dwindled, many insist the movement is not weakening. We still believe in this. This speaks for itself. We're not alone, like what we saw on Tuesday. To begin with, 
The protest wasn't that large, but as we went on, we saw people coming from all directions. So yes, we are confident. We will succeed and get something out of this. In Paris, tens of thousands flocked to the city centre. That's according to the hardline CGT union. And security was exceptionally tight, following an outpouring of anger the previous day, which culminated in a violent confrontation. Later, a police car was torched, leaving two officers wounded. After Wednesday's violence, officials have slapped bans on 19 people designated as hardcore activists, forbidding them from joining the rallies. I heard the Prime Minister's call to stop these protests. He's funny. What's all this about in the first place? His bill. Without this bill, there'd be no demonstrations and no violence. Despite the ongoing tensions, President François Hollande has said he will not bow down. He will push the labor reforms aimed at making hiring and firing easier. Hollande says the El Khomri law will encourage firms to recruit and bring down unemployment, stuck stubbornly at above 10%. Now, debris found in the Mediterranean off the Greek coast. These are our headlines on France 24. The debris that's been found off the Greek coast, it's unclear for now whether it belongs to missing Egypt air flight MS-804. 66 people were on board the Airbus when it went missing in the early hours of Thursday morning. Egypt's vice president says the rescue operation has become a search and recovery operation. And it's time for Media Watch now. James Creedon is here. Hi, and James, hello, thanks for joining us. You've been taking a look at this Egypt uh, air missing plane as it's played out on social media. That's right. So for stories like this, we're, we're used to seeing messages of solidarity on social media and you've graphics and hashtags that have been cropping up 